Hi everyone. Great to see you guys again. And this episode, we're going to be reviewing how to use the Office Deployment Tool. Um, now, it can be a little convoluted and not very straightforward. And the documentation on it exists, but it's a little weak. So, I actually just uh, assisted a coworker with using this earlier today, so I figured this would be a great topic for a video. So we'll go ahead and we'll uh, we'll open up Edge here. And we'll just look for the Microsoft Office deployment tool. We can go ahead, it should be, it'll be this result here. And we'll go ahead and download this tool. And open the folder. So we have it here in our downloads folder. We'll go ahead and we will right click and run it as administrator. It's going to ask us where we want to store the extracted files. So let's go ahead and put them on the C drive. And we'll make a new folder here. We'll just call it Office. And we'll hit OK on that prompt. You may get a prompt that says, this tool failed, but it usually works. There we go. Under C, Office. So here's the setup file. Um, this is a command line based application. So you can't, if you just try to open this up, nothing will happen. So the way this works is this is the kind of like the executable, and then it references um, a whatever configuration file that you specify. So they give you a couple of samples here, but we're not going to use these samples now. Um, uh, Microsoft actually recently released, um, like within the last year, um, they have a, a, a dedicated website that allows you to go in and set all your parameters for uh, your configuration file. And you can customize it, and then it just exports the XML file. And that's what we're going to do right now. So let's go back. We'll go back here, and let's just we'll just do a basic search for it. And actually, it is config.office.com. And we will. You can sign in if you'd like. If you have a, if you already have a pre-existing Office 365 admin portal you can sign in with it and then it'll save it to your account um, we won't do that right now we'll just go ahead and we'll create a new configuration here we'll hit create so it starts off with this screen it allows you you know what architecture do you want to deploy 32 or 64 bit we'll go ahead and we'll just do 64 bit and then he asks you what switch do you want um, the default applications were probably going to be business. That's what most people will use. And that's what we'll select for this test. We don't have any Visio project or any additional language packs or runtime or anything like that. So we're not going to. And it asks you which version do you want to deploy. Or you can select a previous build. This is really useful because they have, you know, if there's a particular build that works with your, your client or your needs, you can select this here. And then you can disable what apps um, you don't want to install. So in this particular instance, we don't need access. We're not going to need Publisher or Teams or Skype for business. We just kind of want the basic OneDrive, Outlook, Word, Excel, PowerPoint. And we'll go next. And then it'll ask us to select a primary language, which we'll go ahead and select English. And we can select additional languages and um, other proofing tools. We'll go ahead and... Uh, Skip those and hit next. Now we're at the point of selecting a installation option. Do we want to deploy Office from an existing path or do we want to download it from the Office Content Delivery Network? In this particular instance, what we want to do is we want to specify a local source and then we will enter in the source path of where we want it to download the office installation 
uh, files too. So we'll go ahead, we'll go back to our folder here. We know we're in C office, so we'll just go ahead and copy this path and put it in source. And we can do show installation to user. Um, if you know this will this will make it a silent install. For this particular one, we want to see the installation, and then we want to pin icons to the taskbar. Um, they'll pin the office icons here below. Then, if you want to specify a log, we can. And we'll go next. And then, if you it asks you where do you want to deploy updates from, so you can specify. Uh, if you want to get them direct from Microsoft, if you have a local source you want them to be deployed from, or if you have a SCCM manager, you can use that as well. And we'll leave automatic updates selected. Um, here we can uh, specify to uninstall any existing pre-existing versions of Office. This is a really useful tool for um, for people who may already have an older version installed. We'll go ahead and leave the defaults. So we'll hit next. And this is important for silent installations. Um, if you don't want to get prompted for anything, if you just want to install it and either have it be completely silent, any background silent installers this can work, or if you don't want to, have to actually have to be prompted to do anything, always make sure you have the EULA set to on. And we'll do uh, product activation user base. This is the default. This will be 90% of people unless you have like a shared computer activation, like a terminal server. Um, but other than specialized use case scenarios, you're not going to use shared computer user base will be what you'll need. We'll hit next on this. And you can provide um, organization name. So on, um, on the property of Office documents, if you go into the details section, it'll show the company property. You can put whatever you want in here. So we'll just put John Hatfield Company. And we'll hit next here. Oh, uh, no special character. Next. And they give you a ton of additional application preferences that you can select. Um, as you can see here, we're not going to dive into all this, but um, we'll leave the defaults for now. But as you can see here, you can really customize installations um, on a per use case scenario. And as you can see, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. We'll go ahead and we'll leave those uh, with the defaults. We'll hit finish. And um, if, here's a, a quick little summary of everything we've configured. And we'll go ahead and we will hit export. And for this, for XML documents, we'll go ahead and we will choose op Office Open XML documents. And hit OK. We'll accept the terms. It'll, um, you can give it whatever file name you want. This will create a .xml file um, that you will reference when you run the setup utility through command line. It'll automatically append the .xml at the end of this file name. So we can just leave it as configuration and we'll hit export. We'll go ahead and we'll save this to our C drive in our Office folder. And we'll go ahead and we'll just overwrite the existing one that we have there. We'll hit yes. Now let's minimize this. And now let's go into PowerShell or Command Prompt. Either will work. And run it. make sure you run it as administrator. And let's do a CD, C Office. And we'll run the setup. And we'll run the slash download option. And then we will reference our configuration file, which will be configuration.xml. And we'll go ahead and we'll hit enter. Now you'll see here, it'll automatically create a subfolder called Office, and it'll begin install downloading all the required installation files. It won't show anything, but if you're if you're unsure if it's actually moving, you can just, what I normally do is I'll open up Task Manager here and go into uh, more details. And under the performance section of your Ethernet adapter, you should be able to see it receiving, and you can see right here, downloading at 160 megabits a second. Uh, we're definitely getting some data moving. So I'll go ahead and I'll pause the video here while this downloads, and I'll resume it when it's finished. Okay, we see here that our Ethernet adapter is, is idle, 
and we'll switch back to our PowerShell window and we'll see it's returned us back to um, the starting option. If we go over to our office window here and let's look at the properties of this, we'll see that it's about two and two gigabytes in size. Uh, they're almost always about like between two and three gigabytes, just so you know. Um, but now this is done, so we'll come back here and we will run a setup.exe. And this time we will run the slash configure switch and then we'll reference the same configuration.xml file. And this will kick off the installation of what we specified in our configuration file. And right off the bat, it opens up Office and it's gonna, be, it's gonna begin the installation. And since we selected that automatically accept EULA switch, it's actually not gonna prompt us for anything. Um, this will automatically download and install without any user input whatsoever. We can even select the, the option to hide this installation entirely if we want to do a, si a completely background silent install. So uh, once again, I'll just pause the video while we're here and I'll uh, resume it once the installation is finished. Okay, and it, just like that, it finished the installation. We didn't get a single prompt or anything. We'll go ahead and we'll hit close on this. And let's close out of all these other windows here. And let's go to our start menu. And look at that. We have perfectly installed. Let's go ahead and let's open up Word. Now it's going to prompt us for our Office 365 sign in as soon as we open it. So we'll go ahead and we'll sign in with our account. Hit next and put in our super secret password here. And go ahead and hit yes. And just like that, we are done and signed in. Um, if you want to double check that your product is activated for, for certain, we can go to account and you'll see here subscription product. And um, well, that does it for this installation here. I do want to point out that if you are using this guide to um, set up a bare bones system for cloning, note that as soon as you open the Office installation, it automatically creates a randomized product key that associates with this installation. So if you're using this for a deployment for an image or a WDS server or SCCM, make sure that after, if you're installing this on your base image, make sure you do not open Office when the installation is finished. Uh, or if you do, make it snapshot before you do so you can revert back to that. Okay, well that does it for this for this episode. If you guys have any questions or comments, please leave a comment in the section below and remember to like and subscribe. Thank you.